I'm here today with Aileen Innes from Heaton Baptist Church, one of our ministers in training at Cranmer Hall. I should just ask, first of all, how's, how's the training going so far into your first term, Aileen? It's going really well. I'm really, really enjoying it. There's a, there's a lot to get my head around, but um, I'm enjoying the journey so far. Fantastic. Well, it's good to have you with us for the second time because you already shared testimony earlier in the year for us. Anyway, today uh, I've invited Aileen to join me because we've both read... Uh, this particular book, going around the right way, The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry by John Mark Comer, uh, an American pastor from the, uh, the West Coast who uh, was a mega church pastor, burnt himself out by living far too frenetic a life uh, and has, has taken a very different course of lifestyle uh, and is encouraging Christians to recognise dangers in hurry and there are dangers in busyness. In fact, they're the enemy of a, uh, a deep spiritual life. So, Aileen, would you like to summarise, you've read the book as well, summarise what's in the book, if you can, briefly, uh, as, as far as you and I might chip in as well. <laughs> yes, please do chip in, Paul. Um, I think, yeah, at the start of the book, um, John Morcoma talks about the busyness of life as a pastor in a sort of kind of mega church environment um but he he really starts off by I think one of his mentors was John Ortberg and he starts off with a conversation with John Ortberg who had asked his mentor Dallas Willard um you know what was the the key to spiritual health or what did he need to to do to to lead a spiritually healthy life and I think maybe Ortberg was expecting a kind of sermon or kind of 10 top tips or something like that um, and Dallas Willard simply said and tell me if I quote this wrong Paul um, you must ruthlessly eliminate hurry from your life mm. um, hurry is the great enemy of the soul um, and that had had a profound impact, I think, on on Coma, on Ortberg, and then on Coma. Um, and the book really explores 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 that idea that we live in a frantically busy um, life uh, world. And even there's a chapter even on um, the the history of speed. And how our society has sped up, sped up over the years, which I found really, really interesting. Um, it was so interesting to see, and just to remember that actually society hasn't always been this this busy. Um, and then he looks at what damage that's doing to our spiritual lives, and then he starts to look at what the solution is. and And he does say the solution isn't more time. Um, the solution, I think he says something like to slow down and simplify your life around the things that really matter. And he goes on to look at four different ways that we can do that as, as, a, as a starting point. That's a really good summary. And, 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 and just to say those four disciplines, spiritual disciplines, which is really the, the, the chunk of the book is... Uh, uh, if I can get them in the right order, solitude. And he talks about going to your your desert place, the Eremos, which is a great word, uh, just a place where, where there are no distractions, uh, of, of practicing Sabbath, uh, of, of simplicity, and, and particularly how we, um, it's a challenge of the, the materialistic world in which we live. Um, and then finishing off with, with some advice on slowing. All begin with S, so uh, even, uh, yeah. So, so that's basically what the book's about. We can recommend it, both of us, and, and no number of other people, because uh, it's been a, um, uh, a recommendation by a project called The Big Church Read. I'll, I'll put the, uh, uh, the web address on the screen at the end. Uh, so if you're interested, uh, you can join in with this, with, with other people in your church, and, and, and form a reading group and, and be part of this uh, uh, reading project to, to read uh, some, so maybe some modern spiritual classics or some modern spiritual texts. Uh, with one another. So, so for you, Aileen, what 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 came out of that reading for you, and what what was uh, what was God saying to you through the book? I mean, absolutely, tons. I could talk on the book for ages. It's really hard to pull out a few um, key insights. Um, 
Well, first of all, I think I really recognise myself in the busyness. Um, you know, I work for a church. It's a pretty demanding job with kind of unconventional working hours. Um, I've got two young kids. I've got a whole host of other responsibilities, you know, family responsibilities, um, you know, trying to keep up with friendships and uh, make a difference in the community where I'm living and, and all kinds of sort of demands on my time. Um, and I think the book was, I would describe it as both a slap in the face and like a long drink of water, both at the same time. So there was so much challenge in here about how I've sort of kind of bought into the culture of, um, of this kind of crazy world. Um, and I think it really made me look and question some of the the ways that I'm using my time and you know the frantic pace of life but it was like a long drink of water as well because it it didn't just sort of lead, point you to the problem it kind of offered a solution as well um, and I mean the solution and you need to read the book really but the solution it, it sort of points you to is um, to look at the way that Jesus lived his life and to look at the lifestyle of Jesus um, and I think that was one of the most powerful chapters for me in the book was when it talks about how um, a lot of us say that we want the life of Jesus, but we don't always want the lifestyle of Jesus. Um, and I think there's a very good analogy in the book where he talks about watching these um, runners go out at like 6 a.m. or 7 a.m. in the morning for for long kind of a long run and they look so athletic and so fit and healthy and you know he looks at them and he wants to be able to do that but he knows that their lifestyle you know involves going to bed early and you know only eating I don't know kale and quinoa or something you know quinoa sorry <laughs> so yeah um and that we look and we want the life of Jesus but are we prepared to adapt the lifestyle of Jesus as well, uh, which included, which includes slowing down, um, having time to be with Father God, resting on the Sabbath, sim simplifying, you know, your life, not cluttering up your life. Um, so there's so much challenge in that. Um, but also it's actually quite simple as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And um, I remember that chapter that you talk about he, 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 in the book, it's in like really large, bold type as well, isn't it? So suddenly the, there's this one chapter where it's like, this is the most important. I'm going to make sure I realise it because I'm going to put uh, a, a quarter of many word, as words on the page and, and they're going to be really big. So you can't miss. Them. Um, but yeah, the, as you say, you can't live the life of Jesus if you're not following the lifestyle of Jesus, which uh, mm. uh, uh, an interesting thought. And maybe some of us struggle. Uh, and that, the reason why we struggle with, with, with Christ-likeness and discipleship is because we, um, we, we don't adapt our lives to the kind, take on the kind of practices that Jesus took on. Yeah. So uh, the other thing I like about uh, the solution part with these disciplines is he, he's quite practical as well, isn't he? So he doesn't just say, OK, take yourself off in solitude, practice Sabbath, that's the end of it. He, he's very specific and well here are 10 ways you can actually do these things uh, and I think for me that's helpful because I'm I ain't going to just suddenly jump from where I'm at now with my busy lifestyle to to um uh slowing down completely and living a totally different lifestyle there's, there's steps along that journey that we all take and even an athlete had to start off learning uh, the discipline of a shorter run before they could do the longer run didn't they Speaking to, to somebody here, I know you being an athlete yourself, Aileen, uh, and me occasionally attempting to, to run. Um, so have you picked up any of the, the steps or the ideas or the practices yet? Or are there any that you're, you're actually actively working on, having read the book? And, and if so, what would they be? Yeah, definitely. And I think you're right. You know, he offers loads of sort of practical suggestions of things you can do. And I almost wanted to do all of them, <laughs> but I realised that I needed to just pick sort of one or two. Um, he talks a lot about technology um, and how, um, 
you know, our overuse of technology and, and, and how it kind of makes us available at all times. Um, so one thing he suggests in the book, and I've been trying to do, is put my phone to bed with my children. So he talks about doing that. Um, so I'm trying just to put my phone away um, about half eight, nine o'clock at night and not look at it again. Um, and I've made the, I've, what I'm trying to do is not look at it again until I've gotten up the next day and I've had some time with God. Um, so instead of just my phone being the first thing I look at in the morning, so what's happened in the world, look at the news, you know, have I got any emails? Has this person text back? Does anybody need me for something? Actually not trying not to look at my phone before I've, I've had some time with God. I've definitely had some success with that. Um, I've not been perfect, I have to admit, you know. Um, but also just trying to go out sometimes and leave my phone at home if I'm if I'm having a day off. You know, why would I need to take my phone with me? Why would I need to just check my emails? Um, you know, the world can function without me for a few hours. Um, so I have been trying to just to leave my, my phone at home. Um, and that's been part of trying as well to implement the Sabbath, um, which I've got a long way to go on, definitely. Um, but I am trying to create a sort of period in the week where I switch off, rest, give my family some time, um, you know, worship God um, and don't just think about the big to do list. Mm, thank you. Yeah. Uh, and, and I'd be in a similar place to you. Uh, I, I, I... I'm now recognising that I've never really taken a proper Sabbath where I do I, I get a rest from the the normal pattern of life because even on my Sabbath I can be on on a screen on the computer doing other stuff. Uh, so I'm now trying to turn the computer off and leave it off for a day uh, mm. and just not go in there. Uh, and yeah. that'd be helpful because the the first time I did that I just felt much more peace. Mm. I, I noticed a difference straight away, and and it was quite quite a surprise how, how, how quickly the the impact of, of that was for me yeah um yeah one of the other things he talks about which is a big challenge for us in, in um the uk is simplifying and living more simple lifestyle i wonder if you've got any thoughts around that and what what came out for you when he was talking about living more simply yeah well i really loved what he did in the book where he kind of made me realize how much and my stuff actually takes up my time. Um, so, he, you know, he, he talks about, you know, um, how some of the things that we buy, um, you know, then they therefore need a time and attention to kind of look after those things. Um, he talks about, you know, if we've got to a level of kind of materially stuff that we need or want, we then need to work so hard to keep a certain salary level so that we can have that stuff and that all kind of stops time where we can rest or have time with God or really be focused on the things he's asking us um, about and he simply sort of simply suggests just trying to declutter some of the stuff in your life again I think there's a workbook that goes alongside um, the book that you can download and he, he really sets out a really simple kind of decluttering um, you know, method. And I have, you know, been trying just to ask that question of, do I really, do I really need these, these material things around me? Um, and are they kind of steal and time that could be spent uh, with God? And, and in, I think, I don't know if it's a podcast I've listened to or the workbook, he also talks about decluttering your diary so you know simplifying your diary so from time to time him and his wife will write down everything that they are a part of everything that they do in the day everything they do in the week and they'll lay it all out on the table before God and um, with the aim of taking three things out that they're just that they may be doing which actually God's not in anymore or they don't need to be doing or it's a layer that adding into their week that they don't need. Um, and I think that's a really helpful activity. I actually haven't done it yet, but I'm really hoping um, 
to to do that and i love it just one more thing paul sorry i love in the book where he talks about limitations you know live that is actually limitations on our time and limitations um on the things we can be involved in and i think that's all part of simplifying as well we're kind of like well i do you kind of want to do it all you know, I want to I want to be part of every experience. I want to see every film. I want to try every new restaurant. You know, we're kind of but you want to be involved in every project that your church is doing. But there's actually limits um, on our time. So as much as he talks about simplifying our stuff, our material stuff, he also talks about simplifying the things that you can actually be involved with or do. Thank you. Yes, and it strikes me that we're just heading into the season uh, of Advent and Christmas, and and whereas it should be a slow time where we we give more time to to wonder and, and meditate upon the marvel of uh, and the mystery of the incarnation, um, so many Christians, along with the rest of our society, um, hurry up even more, don't we? We tend to be more busy. There's more stuff going on. We eat more. We spend more money. We're more materialistic than ever before. It's almost like Christmas is the antidote to, uh, uh, well, sort of the opposite of, 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 of uh, uh, th- this kind of slow and, and peaceful life. So it's 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 a good book to get your teeth into at this time of year, uh, yeah. and maybe whether or not you read it to think about. Well, how can you slow down uh, in this season? How can you simplify life? How can you declutter life, your diary? Um, can you give away things rather than just buying more stuff that you don't really need for, or buying other people's stuff that they don't really need? Uh, these kind of questions are good questions to ask. A final thought from you, Aileen, uh, as we close in terms of, um, uh, yeah, anything that, 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 that God's put on your heart that, that, that you think is important to share that, that comes out of the book for you? I think probably the, 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 the big sort of thing that it's left me with, which has been really helpful, um, is that question of just a life looking at Jesus, abiding in Jesus and asking the question um, I've got written down here. How would Jesus live if he were me? And I found that so helpful. It actually you have to not be hurried to ask that question. Um, you know, you have to have time to stop and to think. And I am so guilty of just racing through a day and being irritated by interruptions and um, not having the time to stop and think, you know, if Jesus was in this situation, you know, what what would he do if he was living my life today? How would he respond to this? Um, and that is, I think, when you do that, it's very illuminating. Um and yeah, I do remember as a teenager wearing the bands around my wrist, what would Jesus do? WWJD. And it's kind of hit me again, reading this book, that that really is what the Christian life is about. Stopping and asking, what would Jesus do? Um, and it's been a really helpful journey for me, the insights of this book. Thank you very much for sharing a little bit of your precious time. Uh, for the benefit of others and uh, uh, whether or not you read the book um, the, the kind of spiritual disciplines that have been talked about you can find in many other uh, uh, writers like Richard Foster or Dallas Willard or John Altberg as, as Aileen's mentioned uh, and, and they'd be a good read for this time of year if you have the time to set aside a bit of space for engaging with God in this way. Thanks again God bless you in your training and in your ministry and in your practice of uh, eliminating hurry from your life. Bye for now. Thank you. Bye. Thanks.